I'm trying to see. Let's call the meeting to order. All right. Um, thank you. Before we get started, um, we need to make a presentation to somebody, and, and that would be Jan Doberton. Yeah. All right. Next order of business is uh, introduction of visitors and guests. Do we have any visitors and guests here? Or oh, well, right. I'm sorry. All right, Clay and Carolyn. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, is there anything you'd like to um, discuss? Do you have any questions or something you'd like to present to us? All right, great, thank you. With that, let's move to the amenity reports. Debbie? Last weekend was a very successful disc golf event. Uh, Jessica can tell you about it, but it was very successful. The weather gods smiled on us on Saturday, and uh, it was tremendous. And everybody that I've been talking with at Branchwood, I've been asking them to be sure and vote. They've just been very, very optimistic and very positive about the entire facility. So, and everything seems in order. That's it. Thank you. Uh, Ken is out, uh, so Tyree Park we have no update on, but I have, I have a funny feeling it's getting ready to get winterized and, and be in some good shape. Jackie, you came in just in time. You go ahead and tell us about the RV uh, Storage Park in Lake Ann. The RV park, I got my code, and so I went and checked that out, and I had never been there before and talked to a person who was storing his boat. He was very appreciative of the new pavement and the new painting and all that and had good things to say about it, but from what I could tell, it looked like it was all in a lot of spots. I had no idea there were that many spots out there. It's a very large storage area. And then Lake Ann it's fine on the wreck. Obviously, there's a lot of debris and stuff in the lake and all that stuff, but the area, recreation area, looks good. All right, thank you. Oh, Mary's missing today, too. It's one day. That's what I'm saying, is Mary's missing. All right, the gun ranges. I went out yesterday uh, to the pistol and rifle range and spoke with Royce. Uh, there was uh, um, just a couple of folks out there, quite a few in the rifle range, like one, one pistol, and then went over and uh, spoke with Carol at Trap and Skeet. And it was pretty busy once again. It seems to be pretty busy on Sundays. And took me around and showed me the, uh, showed me the building. I guess there's been some talk about doing maybe some remodels in that, and showed me where all the water's been coming in, so I told him I'd, I'd talk about it and to let you know in case you didn't know, John. <laughs> uh, other than that, everybody's pretty happy out there. Um, Sportsman Club does a good job uh, of supporting what we do out there, and uh, it's really a nice facility. It's in really good shape, so other than that, things are looking fine. And I think he enjoys when I come out and just talk to him for about 10 to 15 minutes every week, you know, every week. Val. Uh, Jerry, you forgot Jan. Again. Oh, I did drive out by you, didn't I? <laughs> I am so sorry, Jan. It happens three, three out of four times. Yeah. Okay, so my report, of course, is for Loch Lomond, the recreation complex. And as most of you know, Loch Lomond received extensive damage from the rain a week ago yesterday. Fences are down and fish in the dog park and rocks and, and everything all over the place. And just, it's 
pretty disheartening because I've al always commented on how well that is taken care of. It's mowed beautifully and everything is kept beautiful down there and it's pretty sad right now. But despite all of that, there was activity on the ball diamond on Wednesday night, which I was kind of surprised. There was no police tape around it or caution tape, so they were able to play a little bit. Uh, the repair work has started on the electrical on the scorer's table. Um, the box is gone anyway, and the pipe coming up from lower is, is gone, so I think probably somebody's working on that because that had gotten full of rocks or something. I think the kids had pretty much vandalized it. Trash barrels need some attention. The one by the uh, third baseline is full of trash, and the one by the scorer's table is full of water and trash. And I have to be honest, I didn't get down to the one on the first base baseline, but probably they're all about the same. Maybe left over from the uh, Wiener Dog races, I don't know. The restrooms looked, looked fine. Uh, Debbie uh, and her group, I have to say, and I said this on Facebook, trying to get a, a real positive comment out there, trying to you know, be as positive as we can. And um, that Wiener Dog race, there were hundreds of cars there. It, that place was packed. Yeah. And I went by at 315 and it didn't look like anything had happened. Everything was cleaned up, the tr there was no trash. It was totally the volunteers. The volunteers and the committee did an outstanding job cleaning up the area after a big event. I mean, it was big. So anyway, that's it. Thank you can skip you. me and come back to me anytime, Gary. <laughs> Next time I'll check you off to make sure I got you. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's what did it. <laughs> All right, Val. Blowing Springs and the RV uh, park, are, I went by there right before I came over and amazingly it looked pretty good for the big events that you had there this weekend. Um, most of everything was cleaned up, but the bathrooms looked good. Um, I talked to the lady in the building and she said they're now they're gearing up for craft week for the craft fairs, so they've got a lot of campers coming in. There still were quite a few bikers still in tents out there when I went through this afternoon, so that's it. Thank you. Steve. Yes. Uh, Tenured Creek and uh, Lake Avalon, two of the areas that when we get those torrential rains like that really get hammered pretty good. Uh, before I say much more about those two areas, though, I do want to say a word of uh, appreciation for POA staff and their responsiveness to, uh, to these kinds of events. Uh, it's very impressive to see their tenacity, to see how resilient staff is with regard to these things can be, for me, I, 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 I can feel you know set back by them but I don't I don't see that in our staff and I'm I'm impressed with that and I had conversations over the weekend with members of staff Jessica and Trey and and, and Joan and they lift me up as uh, as a member of the community I, I see how quickly they're able to respond and and just take it on in stride as though hey this is this is what we do this is what we have to deal with and I'm very, very impressed by that. And it spills over, I think, from POA staff to our vo volunteer teams. I've spent some time recently with Randy Hamm, who is the volunteer coordinator for Tanyard Creek. In fact, I was just with him an hour or so ago, and we were walking off Tanyard, and he was showing me the damage. And it's considerable. And trees down, and uh, what once were trails are now mounds of gravel. And these things have to be addressed. And by and large, I think Tanyard Creek is handled by the volunteer team uh, with support by, from, from POA staff. And it's probably to the point, Randy almost came to the meeting today to kind of uh, to give you guys firsthand response, knowledge of, of where the damage is. And in the end, uh, he felt like he had some other things he needed to do, but he wanted me to convey that uh, the volunteer team will meet tomorrow morning as they do every week at nine o'clock there and they'll start to chip away at these things. And uh, the swinging bridge uh, needs to have some engineering consideration 
It's probably more than a volunteer team of laymen ought to be assessing as to whether it's safe. Uh, the same with the overlook at the falls. It was considerably eroded and is tilted some more. Uh, the swinging bridge is also tilted in a way that I haven't seen it before that makes you, th and he showed me also where some of the concrete piers that are the, the, the most important infrastructure of that swinging bridge have tilted. And so all of that area had very, very strong flowing waters running over it. And it really made a mess out of it, I would say. Uh, and yet there were people there enjoying it today, kids, parents, as much as they could. They, some of them uh, probably didn't know uh, that if they'd been here two weeks ago, it looked a lot better than it does right now. Uh, but you might, if, if you have time, go out and walk about uh, Tanyard Creek, see the swinging bridge for yourself, and have some appreciation for what this volunteer crew does. Uh, it's, it's incredible how much uh, we depend on volunteerism, not only by way of the POA, but by way of the city, our entire community, uh, is, is really uh, what it is because of uh, people willing to volunteer their time and and their work and their sweat and their their efforts on behalf of the community so i'm very very impressed and, and lifted by that and uh yeah there are trees down at tenured that need to be cleaned up uh the kind of the rule the agreement between the volunteers and the poa is that the volunteer team does not swing a chainsaw uh, so those things are, are we started working on some of those. One of the trees was actually down against the bridge and it had to be cut loose uh, this morning. So uh, we're in the midst of putting things back together and getting things back to, uh, the way we like for them to be. But right now, uh, there's a mess at Tanyard. Avalon looks really, really good. I think all things considered by the pictures I saw just a week or so ago, uh, yeah, Probably the beach area needs, is going to need some grooming and cleaning up, but uh, all things considered, uh, I think the, beach, the, the lake came out really well. There were people out there playing today, having fun on the uh, zip line, and uh, it's great to see that even, even though things are a little scuffed up as, as, uh, as those storms have uh, left a considerable amount of work for us to, to clean up. So thank you to the POA resources that do respond quickly and, and uh, do it in stride. I think that's really impressive. Enough said. Thank you. Chris. All right. Well, over at Metfield, the bathroom was repaired, the sign. It looks good there. Um, it's clean. No, uh, no damage or vandalism this, this month, so that's great. A little bit of gravel wash in one of the parking lots by the pickleball court due to all the storms. Maybe if I talk into it. <laughs> Gets me every time. Sorry. So, uh, yeah, there's a little bit of gravel in one of the parking lots that needs to be um, swept away. Just put that on the list. Uh, the bathroom, as I mentioned, is looking good. And the um, item probably for a, a springtime repair would be the the chips, the wood chips underneath the swings, looks pretty well worn away. So the kids, uh, looks like they use that well. And there's some big troughs that could use leveling out. Uh, that's it for Medfield. Over at London Park, you know, just items due to Mother Nature that could be put on the list. Um, they include a lot of gravel that was washed over onto the access road. And then a lot of uh, driftwood and debris all along the, the shoreline and stuff. Um, and the shoreline looks a little bit different over there now, too. There's a the large gravel wash that kind of extends out to the edge of the pier, too. So um, that running water really is powerful and, and change things up a little bit. But um, that's it for my report. Thanks, Chris. Uh, moving on to new business, Deb, uh, welcome meet and greet for November. Yeah, we have November 9th is our next welcome meet and greet. And we only have 20 people so far, but usually we get a lot more in the last couple weeks. And there's a lot going on right now. Um, and everything is confirmed. My highly paid volunteers have come forth once more time. Um, also, I wanted to mention about the, the park with 
our wiener dog races last Saturday. We had between six and 800 people. And it really, it means so much to have that park. I can't even tell you. And, and I just need to know where the dead fish came from. Is it, was it over the dam? Spillway, at the spillway. Oh, that's amazing. Okay. Anyway, it was, it was a great facility and it worked well. And, and the animal shelter thanks the POA for the privilege to use it. But anyway, and the, and the meet and greet is November 9th. And anybody knows anybody new, send them my way. It was a flying fish. <laughs> All right, is there any other new business? I do have something that um, I do want to bring up, and, and Deb gave me a, an email this morning, and it's re regarding amenity reports, seeing as we're having a rotational on our who's taken, who's taken the minutes, that the, uh, the actual reports themselves are really only what we talk about, as opposed to doing something in writing as we had done in the past. Um, I looked through the, uh, the last thing that we got our orientation on, and it doesn't say that you need to put anything in writing so much, but here's what I think we need to do to be able to capture the same consistent information by all of us, is that we, if we elect to put it in our email to someone, and I have a funny feeling that someone would probably be myself because, because we don't have a secretary. Uh, I'm gonna put a format together that'll it'll have like your name, your amenity, the month it is, um, what's the current state, for instance, when you went down, what did it look like? Is it in great shape? Is it not great shape? What are the things you see that um, may need an improvement? Uh, how about some observations to that? Uh, as well as, did you have an opportunity to talk to anybody, any of our membership? Because sometimes you see members and sometimes you don't. I could spend about an hour to an hour and a half out at the gun range at any given time. <laughs> Just because there's so many folks out there. And uh, there's a lot of stories out there. So uh, I think that's what uh, we should do. I wanted to get your feedback on it first. It's, only, it's, it's a few things, but it covers the goods, the, uh, what needs help, and some feedback from our members. Yes. Gary, as a s former secretary, we accumulated those on a monthly basis and then sent them to Tammy. Mm -hmm. Does she use them? Does she store them? I mean, what do we do with those reports, the written reports on our amenities? Everything So in other words, your many reports go there too. Okay, the minutes go to the web, but do the Amenity reports go to the web. Okay. So what I'll do is if we can, before our next meeting, when you've already gone out and you've visited your amenity, to send that to me. I'm going to send you something in the next two, three days. Um, and you can just attach it right into your, uh, into, uh, and I mean, just send it to me. And then what I'll do is I'll compile it and send it over to Tammy. So it's all in one document and be attached to our minutes when we're done. Chris. You know, Gary, in the long run, maybe we could look into getting a, a cloud server, you know, getting all us access to a, a location in the cloud, and then we could just each load our stuff into there so a person's not stuck compiling everything monthly. It'd be a longer-term thing to look into, but things like that are out there. True. And that's something maybe we look at from an internal standpoint here. Yeah, certainly the manual methods work, but just trying to make life a little bit easier, you know. Yeah. In the interim, I think if we start this way, while well, we do some research on oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. what's what's yeah. going on. But I think yeah. that that ultimately would be a good idea. Yeah. I, I could take a poke around looking at things like that, but um, been pretty busy lately, so no no promises just yet. That's okay. All right, thank you. So other than those things, do you think that's, that would be just a good basis for us to work with moving forward? Okay, great. All right, with, if there's nothing else, there's staff reports. Tom's not here, he's on vacation. 
He didn't clear it with me, he just told me he had vacation. <laughs> uh, so next would be uh, Rick, who's not here, but John, you want to go ahead and... Rick's also on vacation. Did we clear that with yeah. you? I don't know, did Rick clear that with you? No, but Carol I... said he cleared it with him. Okay. <laughs> Uh, so I'm mostly going to talk about lakes, but I will say uh, both gun ranges have been very busy the last couple of weekends, uh, even with the amount of rain that we had the previous uh, weekend. Uh, we actually had a class on the Sunday that we had all that rain. Uh, everybody was troopers. We actually had that class out at Trap and Skeet and then moved for the shooting portion over to the gun range. Uh, thankfully, the rain had let up, but we didn't have power over at Trap and Skeet while we were teaching class. So everybody was troopers. Uh, interestingly enough, we had several hunters that came out while all that rain was coming down to sight in rifles because this was the only day they were going to get off from work. They were. So they were out there while it was pouring, sighting and rifles, so that, that's dedication. Uh, but other than that, everything is incredibly busy, mostly because of you know hunting season, uh, so everybody's kind of bringing their rifles last minute, muzzle loaders, that sort of thing, getting sighted in. Um, that's kind of the end of the good news, I guess. Uh, <laughs> I wish it wasn't so. Uh, no, it's, it's, it's not as bad as it seems, I guess. Um, so just a little bit of uh, update on, on the flooding. Uh, Stony Kirk uh, probably sustained the most damage from uh, a boat ramp perspective. Uh, it's kind of expected at this point. We just expect it's going to wash out uh, just about any time we get a lot of rain. We actually fixed it Thursday afternoon, and by Friday morning it was uh, a, a, a gully again. Uh, so it is shut down at the moment, but uh, we'll get that opened back up just as soon as we can get a backhoe available to get out there and bring our parking lot from the lake back into the parking lot. Uh, of course, you guys already know about the excessive damage over at the, uh, the small ball, uh, dog park and the ballpark. Uh, yes, you are correct. Those fish came from over the spillway uh, right at the edge of what is now part of the small dog park. Uh, we estimate there's probably six or seven feet of water in there. Um, and there were, when we got here that morning, there were 50 and 60 pound grass carp that were out there on the ball field where they had come in and then gotten beached. Uh, so there's plenty of fish. The, uh, of course, the raccoons are having a lot of fun with that. Uh, we're in the process of trying to figure out exactly what we are gonna do about the dog park uh, and the ball field. Of course, the ball field will get repaired. We're not sure exactly what we'll do about the small, small dog park as of yet, just because it displaced all the soil that made up about half of that dog park. Uh, as a matter of fact, if you, if you walk back beyond where the old fence line was, you'll see where parts of that stream bank, there's six or seven feet of soil and trees that have been removed and parts of that where it's just scoured. Um, <clears throat> Uh, flood debris also shut down the Tyree and London boat ramps uh, for the day on uh, Monday. Uh, we did open those up really quickly uh, and they've remained open. We did have some debris back in London uh, after the flooding that we had on Thursday night, but nowhere near as bad as it was the first night. Uh, of course, like you've mentioned, the swinging bridge was bridge was damaged over at Tangard Creek. Can you guys hear me okay? Okay. Swain Bridge was damaged. Uh, the abutments were, were kind of knocked away from the bank. Mostly we think because of the tree. Looks like it just hit it like a battering ram. Full size tree just came down the creek and then hit the bridge. So that, that's going to take a lot of work. The guys were out there today uh, trying to tr uh, trim trees as much as they could uh, just to kind of get that some of that work out of the way so we can more accurately assess what is going on down there. Uh, Lake Rangers, every single day until we're pretty sure we've got it uh, wrapped up, are going to be patrolling for loose kayaks and boats. We think we've gotten all the boats to this point. Uh, there's still some kayaks that are unaccounted for. Some of them have probably made it under docks and that sort of thing. So we're still out looking uh, and we'll be looking for a while. Uh, to this point, we've returned, I believe, unless something's coming in the last few hours, we've returned every single watercraft that has had proper registration on it 
because we could get with those people very quickly. So uh, if, if you have watercraft and you've registered those watercraft, thank you very much. You make our jobs a whole lot easier when something like this happens. Uh, and if anybody has lost an item, uh, we're just asking everybody to call membership services or the Lexington Parks office. Uh, we don't have much that we haven't returned at this point, but like I said, things are still kind of actively coming in. So uh, if you've lost an item or if you have an item that has shown up that doesn't belong to you, uh, uh, call us, we'll come by and grab it and uh, see if that we can get it back to its proper owner. Um, lastly, uh, over uh, in our aquaculture ponds, I know I don't talk a whole lot about this, this at this meeting, but uh, those ponds were inundated by Little Sugar Creek. Pretty much the entire golf course became Little Sugar Creek the other night. Uh, we had blue catfish in those ponds. Uh, miraculously, it looks like we still kept most of our catfish, which is... They stayed. They stayed. Wow. Not totally surprising to us. Uh, blue catfish are riverine species anyway. We kind of figured they might hunker down when something like this happens, but we weren't completely sure, and every situation's a little different, but we have been feeding those catfish, and they're still coming back to a formulated food. So looks like we kept them, so that was a stroke of good luck. Uh, on that note, we are kind of worried about what did get into the ponds, though, because right now those catfish are three, four inches long, so there's a lot of fish that would have come in come in out of Little Sugar Creek that can take advantage of uh, little catfish like that. But uh, thankfully, blue catfish grow fairly quickly, so we'll, uh, we'll be focusing on uh, feeding those catfish, trying to uh, make them outgrow their predators, and uh, we may work on maybe some passive capture of predators a little later if we think it's gonna be a problem. Um, and then, uh, I guess lastly, tonight uh, we will start our fall fish surveys, uh, so thankfully it's not my night, so I won't have to be out till midnight or 2 a.m., but uh, if you see a boat out on the lake with a lot of lights and it's very loud, that's just your uh, friendly lake biologist uh, trying to wake you up. <laughs> so we'll, uh, we'll be doing this for probably the next couple of weeks, uh, running nets, running uh, electrofishing samples, making a lot of noise, unfortunately. Uh, but we'll get a lot of data out of these uh, next couple of weeks. So with that, that's it. That's all I got. Uh, fish surveys, fish population surveys. All right. Thanks, John. So if you like the sense, you can clock Yes. So Joan. Yes. So I am excited. I'll talk a little bit, but I've got two of my key managers on our team. Um, here today, so you'll hear from them as well. Um, first, uh, many of you may not have had the opportunity to meet Trey Anson. He's um, been recently promoted to uh, trail and outdoor rec manager. He worked for us all spring and summer uh, running the marina and has done a bang up job. Uh, as you know, the marina was the first year for us to take it in house, and he has done a great job not only in you know, learning the business because it was third partied and we had little data to run off of. Um, the third party did a great job for many years, uh, but they did things their way and they didn't have a lot of data that they shared with us. So uh, that made our job more challenging. Um, and again, I'm, I'm very blessed to have Trey on my team. He um, it has been transitioning over the last couple of months in addition to running the marina. It's on its last two weeks. Um, and he has transitioned to helping oversee trail maintenance. As you recall, my responsibility is for both the city and the POA to manage the trail maintenance. So Trey is out there and he's gonna speak a little bit about what he's been doing since not just one storm, but really three storms in the last month, um, but two in the last week. Um, so you'll hear from him in a little bit. And then Jessica, who you all know, is also here. She'll speak a little bit about Branchwood and um, why she hasn't been here the last couple of months because we've all been out in the field in about um, two more weeks. We're all gonna be able to take a little bit of a sigh. So um, just real quick before I throw back to Trey and Jessica, um, regarding the flood at Blowing Springs, um, that's, that's where we were hit hardest, but overall pretty manageable. Um, we closed the park last Sunday for a good two hours. Literally, I was in the parking lot 
turning people away, people are coming back to get to their campers, concerned about their campers, or trying to leave the park. The, the fire department were great partners. They came in with us to assess, but the good news is the water receded quickly. Just so happened we had um, a Airstream rally there. Uh, we had 26 uh, Airstreams that were there for the weekend, so that was kind of interesting, but they, they love the place. They've already told me they want to come back the next two years. Um, this is something that they do annual. Um, but it was interesting because they were obviously worried about their um, RVs. Trey's going to speak about some of the damage and how we internally managed it, both with Mac and with um, our team. Um, then this week also, uh, all three of us and the rest of Team Rec, as we like to call ourselves, were at Flea in the Park. And that was very interesting because Thursday did a number on the fields that we use for Flea in the Park. Um, one of the tent sites, for a major tent where multiple um, vendors are in, was completely flooded. So at the last minute, we were throwing down bales of hay. It was somewhat effective not great but the event overall turned out great and um, it was the first time we did it for two days we had bands we had uh, food trucks we had uh, 45 vendors we had um, a vintage car show so it was really good um, one more thing that's upcoming just as a little fyi this is really something that the city manages but we give them um, the facility to do it. They are doing, they got another grant from the Walton Family Foundation for trees, so they will be doing a, a community tree giveaway on Saturday, November 2nd. I believe they're planning around 1 o'clock. They wanted to do it from 1 to 3. I've advised them, don't advertise 1 to 3 because the trees did not last that long last year. So um, more to come on that. I'm sure Cassie with the city will put out a um, press release but that is scheduled to be in our parking lot over by the pools at Kingsdale Reardon on Saturday, November 2nd. Um, the beach, as Steve alluded to, will need some repairs, but we won't touch that until spring. Because a week before we open this um, season, we got hit with another flood. So we've already budgeted for extra sand. We already know there's going to be a lot of work. We're going to let um, nature run its course until we're getting ready in the spring to um, repair it. The campground, um, bouncing around a little bit, but before I forget, the campground is sold out all month of October, every weekend, and uh, as Val mentioned, um, with craft fairs, we will be super busy this weekend. We prepare to usually be overbooked. We'll allow some people to dry camp in the back of the park. Um, I convert the food vendor electrical pedestals for extra camping so we kind of managed through but it is is a crazy time for us but crazy good and um, Jake just came off a very successful albeit one day tennis tournament uh, two weeks ago that was the Sunday of the rain um, so that it ended up being a uh, Friday, Saturday tournament instead of Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. That um, new this year benefit the Sheepdog um, not-for-profit group. So um, lots of things going on. I'm going to throw to Trey. He's going to talk a little bit about the damage he's seen, what he's been doing out in the field, and how the Oz Trails Off-Road, which was a huge event this weekend that we also have played a major part in, mostly Trey. Um, so Trey. All right. Uh, <clears throat> it was a fun weekend for everybody uh, with the trail. So obviously we had several uh, storms uh, come through. Uh, I don't know if there, well, there were a thousand racers, probably another thousand um, <clears throat> support crews and families. Uh, we had a uh, couple hundred um, mountain bike enthusiasts that were in town to uh, visit some of the uh, other events that were going on with the, the bike race. Uh, this is a what they call an epic ride. There are a half dozen of them uh, on Earth a year. These are big draws. Um, I won't name names, but some famous <laughs> bike racers were here in town for them. It's a uh, a big deal for us to get a show our uh, trail system, um, and most of the race was here in Bella Vista. And we had several 
I don't know what the final count was, hundreds of trees down uh, because of the windstorm and then two uh, pretty serious floods, which are windstorms and floods are about as bad as it gets for these natural trails. Uh, if you rode the race this weekend, you wouldn't have known any of it, though. The group of volunteers, um, the people that um, cl clean day to day, take care of the trails as volunteers day to day, uh, came out. Everyone who um, takes pride in these trails came out. I was there. Several uh, cleanup crews were there. Um, many of us were there. This was there. Uh, everybody jumped in and uh, cleaned up after the first flood and then just came back and did the exact same thing for the second flood. Uh, I, <clears throat> I would hate to think of what the cost of that would have been had it not been for these volunteer groups and the um, people that get involved. And that was, uh, I'm not an expert, but just because of the pride that um, we all take in these trails, there's, there's no... Um, monetary, there was no money moving, uh, almost none of the people would be recognized, um, but people got out and took care of their things. I was just caught up in the sweep of that and as the, you know, the POA's involvement in that, um, again, just uh, doing everything that we can. Several members of the POA were out uh, doing everything they could to get it back together and it was great and it'll rain again and we'll get back out and uh, uh, do the same thing again, I, I suppose. Um, this is a new, obviously the trails are new for us. Um, the involvement that we have with the city and having an outdoor uh, trail manager, this is, you know, I'm not, there was no one doing this job before, so we're building out what the job is, how much we can take care of. We've outsourced uh, much of this work in the past. Um, we've paid other companies to come in and do it. The, the belief is that by doing as much as we can in-house, we'll save money, um, which in this time, um, some we can really help. So this winter, uh, we'll learn a lot more about that and we'll, we'll get to see next year um, how much money we did um, save the members. And <clears throat> of course, we're gonna double the size of our trail system, so we'll have all kinds of new information next year. Uh, the marina, uh, touch on the marina real quick. Uh, as she said, we, we didn't have a lot of information um, from the previous uh, managers, uh, but we did have a lot of uh, information that we gathered from the members who had been uh, coming to that marina. This year, the, the most important thing we did this year, I believe, is find out what, it, what the members want the marina to be. Are, is it a place that rents boats? Is it a place that sells bait? Is it a place that gives uh, information to visiting uh, fishermen and, and boaters, what is it that we're, what can we, what's the benefit of that amenity to the members? And we've gathered a ton of information and I think by about now, about two weeks left in the season, I think we've really got it dialed in. So next year we'll be, um, we'll see some changes next year, but um, it seems that we've, uh, I believe that we've heard from everyone uh, who has an opinion and who would like to make changes to it. So. Uh, next year there might be a few differences, but pretty well oiled. Yeah. Like I say, but right there at the end, we got. I think next week will be our best week, and then uh, and then we'll be and we'll be shutting down the last weekend of the month. Will be the last weekend that we rent. Thanks, Trey. Good uh, good information. And Trey, just again, um, not another way that he's helping save members money is he did um, a lot of in-house boat repairs. You know, the marina is great. I would say probably our most popular amenity are, are the boats and the ability to rent a really nice boat for a very reasonable price. Um, but boats are expensive and um, they break down and members and guests sometimes don't always um, take care of their boats like they would take care of their own boats or they are a little less knowledgeable of boating then they tell us and so sometimes boats run into shorelines and props have to be replaced and all that so that's part of doing business that's what happens when you are having equipment but trey did a lot of in-house repairs in fact um other than a couple of things early in the season we didn't take those boats out which is amazing right there so um, we're, we're pretty proud of, of the season we've gotten through. And like I said, the biggest thing this year was learn, listen, and, um, you know, 
had a lot of positive comments about the marina and that was largely due to Trey and our part-timers who worked there and were pretty passionate as well. So I'm going to throw to Jessica. Uh, Jessica um, has two less pools to run. <laughs> they are officially both winterized and closed down and uh, she's back full action um, helping me with many things but specifically managing Branchwood. So throw to you. All right, thank you. Um, just to touch on the pools closing, um, I don't know if everybody remembers, but I had brought in at the beginning of the season, brought in some of the head lifeguards, and we talked about a water guardians campaign that we did to raise money for three different foundations um, involved with aquatic safety and, and swimming lessons and all kinds of stuff. Um, so we ended up just shy of about $300. Um, but, you know, it was a first-time thing, and Metfield opened a little bit later, as everybody knows. And so, you know, the kids were kind of like, oh, man, we thought we raised more money. But, I you know, I told them, you know, if, we, if you raise enough for one kid to have a swimming lesson, you know, the domino effect of that, you know, can save lives. And when they become a parent, they're going to know how to, they're going to put their kid in swimming lessons or know how to teach them or and all that and and they had a great time with it they were very competitive which was great and the winner gets to keep our little lifeguard troll until next year um, but spoke to all the foundations they were so impressed um, they didn't say you know it, we're not sending them a thousand dollar check you know we're sending you know we're sending one an eighty dollar check and they were so happy I mean, and two of them have already asked us to do it again next year, so that w it was a big success. Um, and I actually had one of the lifeguards already reach out and ask if she could put it on her college application. So anyway, moving on from that, the pools are winterized and closed, and I'm settling back into being physically more present out at Branchwood. Um, but I'm always impressed at how those ladies run it out there. I mean, they are just very self-sufficient. So. I'm very blessed to have those ladies. Um, like Deb said, we had a disc golf tournament. Um, that turned out really good. Um, it, we got about 25. It was the first time we had a tournament, and there was a huge storm right before it, and really the thank you um, can go to, I would say most of it goes to Trey because Joan was nice enough to loan me him. And I went out, I think, for a couple hours one day to help him, and I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> I was beat. And he did that nonstop for three days. Um, the volunteers uh, came out, um, Jose Mendoza and the 59 Flyers Club, which is a disc golf club who put on the disc golf tournament. They came out and did a lot of work. And then Mark Nelson and them had his crew come out to do a lot of stuff as far as mowing and weed eating. So I was a little scared, but everything came together and um, it was really impressive. Um, I will say the guy who won the amateur flight of the disc golf tournament um, was a guy who lives a couple blocks from Branchwood and he hadn't got to play because his wife had, he, they had just had twins and you know, he was so busy and he missed it so much. He came out and won and they were there to watch it and so he was really proud, it was cool. And the one other thing I will say that I was really, I thought was cool was that so many people who walked the trail came to, we had a tent set up with other stuff and they were like, man, and they just started, they were like, this is cool, you know, because a lot of people don't really know what disc golf, not seen it, but seeing the professionals play is something that was really cool. Like I was impressed. And so a lot of people who walk that trail were like, that is this is super awesome and all those guys who play are ultra respective of walkers first they understand that that playing disc golf there comes second so and they thanked the poa for you know being there and us coming out and it was it was really good so can't wait till next year when we can have some bigger ones and just to re reiterate you know what was cool for Jessica did a lot of work on that project. Um, one of our previous managers did a lot of organization with those guys that now a year later get to play mm -hmm. in the tournament. There were a ton of volunteers that helped build that course. To build that course, 
um, without those volunteers would have cost the POA a lot of money. So they are as passionate as some of these other groups. We were talking about Tanyard Creek and, and the golf groups that, you know, are volunteering for their respective golf um, courses. That's what we have with disc golf and, and, and that's huge. So um, kudos to Jessica for getting that off the ground just barely one year after we opened that course. Yeah, and I will also say that e even the professionals, the course out of Branchwood is on a whole nother level than a lot of the courses in Northwest Arkansas. It's as far as its difficulty um, and it's very unique. It literally is in the woods and, and it's, it's awesome and I was they rope off the out of bounds and everything to the right of the golf cart was out of bounds and I thought oh my gosh I would get a hundred on these holes and I'm sure some of the guys thought that but I mean it was it you know it's a very good course and it's a lot of work has gone into it and so I think it's going to pull a lot of professionals and a lot of attention next year and hopefully the community everybody will come out so and that's all I have. All right, thank you. Uh, Judy, marketing. Um, a couple of things from marketing. Um, as we talk about volunteerism, um, um, Jose Mendoza approached me a couple of nights ago about the Alzheimer's Association doing a longest day tournament. So that's something um, we can look forward to next year. So he had talked about it last year, but when he broke his leg, he kind of put it on the back burner, so he was willing to to do that, so I think that will be really fun. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so uh, marketing, you know, we're, we're kind of in the thick of it with the 2020 plan and getting that work done, um, making sure signs stay out and um, banners are the right size and all of that fun stuff. Um, I will say if you haven't seen a post with um, the video, the um, aerial video that Tim put together um, for the 2020 plan, it's pretty amazing. So um, share that as you can. Um, and as a side note, as we're talking about outstanding POA people, um, Tim did um, the majority of putting that together on his own time at home. Um, we don't in marketing have the technology to do something of that caliber in the office. So um, if you get a chance to give him a pat on the back, um, he did a, a good amount of that work on his own time. So. Um, other than that, we're working um, hard on the winter edition, which is always a challenging one because um, uh, December, January, and February are kind of the lowest volume as far as advertising goes. So um, we're trying to get that together and um, just working away. We are down one person, um, which we've all kind of chipped in together to pick up the slack and looks like we're going to be able to handle that, um, the extra duties with that. So that's marketing. Thank you. Uh, I'll sit in and do the board meeting this month. Chris, thank you for doing that last month. Got a chance to see you on TV. Uh, not bad, huh? <laughs> yes. Gary, I'd li also like to thank the POA because the last day before the pools are closed, they allow the animal shelter to bring all their dogs who want to go swimming in the pool. And there were 125 dogs. That's a lot. And they had a great time. Even some of the escape artists were trying to get through the doors and do all kinds of things but it, and it's another fundraiser so it really means a lot and the owners of the dogs had just as good a time I think as the dogs so thank you very much for your efforts all right anything else yes Jerry I'll try this one. That's that better. Works. Okay. <laughs> I just want to bring to your attention the uh, Lakes Committee has been embroiled in an issue for the last two years. 
that they will probably come to a recommendation uh, for the, the POA board in November, December for sure. Okay, I would encourage you if you have any kind of inklings about what happens with the boating on the lakes that you attend one of the meetings anyway, which the next one will be November 13th, uh, and that is at uh, 2 o'clock. Okay, the issue is basically revolving around wakes and waves generated by boats and how they affect the rest of the recreational activities. Okay, so it is a, a very contentious issue between the, the members of the POA. Uh, some want to have more, some want to have less. Uh, some way though, we need to come to some kind of conclusion. So it does affect the recreation committee even though the lakes will be making the recommendation. So, thank you. Thank you, Jerry. Anyone else? Do we have a move to adjourn? Second? All right, meeting adjourned. Thank you very much, everyone. <laughs>